Hi everybody, welcome to uh, a exciting episode of, well it's not technically low-key, well technically we have taken over the big show, so this is, welcome, my name is Harry Price, welcome to the Chris Spangle Show with with me. Now, Dear Leader is out this weekend doing other things that's not the big show, so I have taken over control of it and I'm controlling it now, so ha ha ha, you get to listen to me. But of course I, have no, I never travel alone because traveling alone is wrong, you know. Certain, you know, certain people in certain towns will show you that traveling alone is dangerous. So I travel with a pack, and the best people I like train alone is the great white rhino, uh, rhino, Reinhold. Rhino, why don't you go introduce yourself? Hey, this is Reinhold, and uh, you might hear me on the uh, big show once in a while, but uh, here we are today talking in a much more free form manner, I think. So, yeah, let's yeah. Have some fun. Yeah, free form, a little bit more like old school the way we like like a lot of people used to we used to podcast back in the day, but you know, this is you know, it's it's more fun. And of course, like I said, if if it's me and, and if we're doing like a, you know, low key, you know, wall esque episode or something like that, you you know, and like I said, I don't travel alone and of course I'm gonna have to bring Vincent with me. Why don't you go say hey, Vincent, and introduce yourself. Hello. I'm here and I usually am here when Things hit the fan, and uh, they need something to happen. So oh. this ha- this happened to be this episode is actually something that I came up with and presented. And since <laughs> since Spangle was out, they're like, "All right, here, do this one, whatever, leave me alone." <laughs> well, of course, as you guys all know, like on Friday nights, we sit there at our favorite brewery of choice uh, here in in Lawrence, uh, Trine Brewery, and we have a little walnut meeting. And we sit there and I talk about nerdy subjects, and I'm sure a lot of you get annoyed by some of the nerdy subjects, or you really love the nerdy subjects I have. But sometimes I'm not the one who brings a topic of conversation to the table. Sometimes some people other bring other things up. Now, and they can be how you say nerdier or different or genre that I, you know, just don't even think about or, you know, or like I see in passing. And it's, an, like I said, it's one of the things that keeps me coming back and encourage everyone else to have like a little small, little like end of the end of the week or just random IRL meetups with people, especially like, you know, in the, uh, in the wall network. Uh, so one thing that keeps what was popping up at the table was this topic on, um, Vince kept bringing it up about parasocial relationships and all these different events, and he he finally culminated and pushed it all together into like a nice thing of notes, and it was just like, all right, he's going to boil over with all this information, so let's go ahead and like let him take the reins of the show. Let's let's talk about it. Let's let it out in the open and share this information because if he finds this interesting and he listens to the podcast, guys, I'm sure there's somebody that is driving their car right now going like, yes, finally they're talking about this, or I have an interest in this thing so it's a what the heck is a parasocial relationship so a parasocial relationship is in layman's terms is when there's a one-sided relationship between between a viewer and a presenter or an actor or performer what do you mean Um, by what do you mean by like viewer so it's more of a like i i have a relationship with somebody that they have no they don't have to put any effort into being a part of it, or they might not even be aware of the other person having any input into it. Hmm. Hmm. So, like, it it's more of, like, celebrity worship kind of thing, or in the modern day, it's a lot of, if you're watching something on YouTube and you're in the comments, you're talking to somebody all the time, and they don't really reply to you, but you think they listen to you, and since they since they talk as if they're talking to the audience and you're part of the audience, you become invested in that person. Hmm. hmm. So what you're saying is like, all right, just trying to like understand it. So like, it's just more of a, so just like you guys are like, like just a lot of people who are like listening to this, like this episode right now and they're like, I, I I feel invested. Like you know, I I talk to these people all the time. I listen to these people every day. Like, like, am I in a parasocial relationship? Is this is something that's wrong? What's going on here? Like, uh, the big difference is more of it, it happens a lot when there's more of a massive crowd or a massive group of people. Mostly because it's usually an individual that is completely unaware of your existence. Hmm. So if it's somebody like let's say we have somebody in our chat that talks with us all the time and we interact with that person all the time. That's different because we have a smaller community, and usually we build towards communicating with each other. Mm-hmm. But then, then you have somebody like, you'll take Mr. Beast, 
who has like a tons and tons of you like millions of of YouTube viewers and mm-hmm. subscribers that one in the the hundred million that he has is much smaller than the one of the ten we have. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So, which you so so where did this come about? Like so when like is, is this a problem? Is this big huge thing? Is this or is this like a very scarce niche thing? What's going on? Because like it's like the only person I really hear about it like coming about it like is you and then like the occasional like you know like gossip rag things. What, what what's going on? Right. the The reason I want to talk about it is mostly because because we're still in the pandemic as well as there's still a lot of people who are going through the pandemic mm-hmm. when we when it was the the incredible lockdowns where we didn't have a lot of social interaction with other people physically mm-hmm. so a lot of our interaction came with us you know participating by watching streamers or watching videos and becoming attached to who they are mm-hmm. and currently with the way social media is all basically this is all what the influencers are about so okay. any any influencer on instagram tiktok to it twitch youtube any of those things their their whole their whole career is built on having a community of people that will interact with them even though they don't even know who they are hmm. Hmm. all right so like during the lockdown you're right during the lockdown we did our friday night walnut because like they kicked us out of the brewery. They wouldn't let us in. And they turned into a grocery <laughs> store. You know, right? And it's yes. kind of hard to hang out at the grocery store. We could. We tried. Okay. <laughs> Hung out in the parking lot. But we eventually had to go home. But so we did like a lot of our Friday meetups there. And you're right. We did interact with the chat. Everyone who came in and talked, we brought people in. We actually brought some of the patrons, like, because we had uh, Kurt DeCosta <laughs> And we tried to get everybody who would come in and talk to us, like, in the in the in this uh, in the Discord to talk and talk with us, hang out with us. Don't, no, no, no. We are we. You know, this is the wall community. Jump in the Discord, talk to us. Do not be shy to say hi to me sit in the Discord. Or if you see me playing a game, like, hey, I see you're playing, you know, uh, Satisfactory. Can I jump in? Heck yeah, come on. You know, come on, let's play. Uh, you guys play Paladins? Can I jump in and can I play a match? It's like, yes, yes, you can. You know, we, you know, it's full free. Like, you know, and granted, we have the hindsight of like having a, um, I want to say not small, but quality size community where it's easier for us to be able to interact with you know everyone who like listens to the podcast it's easier i'm not saying like it's we can hit each one every one of you but it's just easier because like and i only concentrate on the discord facebook youtube screw you people (laughs) (laughs) but you know like yeah okay so you're saying like you know because of like we're out there actually communicating with that this is different so like but while in mr beast's case since his community is Slightly larger than ours, only slightly, mm, only slightly. Sure, sure. It is difficult for him to communicate with everyone, so we just kind of just just like broad messages, almost you know, like um, you know, like yeah, you know, so like a celebrity would like it, exactly. Uh, uh, let's say it's it, basically modern day celebrity worship. Okay, okay, all right, and it and it's so like so what's the like but like all right so like people are worshiping like like what like like streamers influencers. Um, people like on like Instagram, they're just, but like, how is this different from being like a, just a fan of the show? You know, like, you know, because like you can be fans of things. Like I've got influencers on my Instagram, but usually that car stuff, like, wow, I really like the build on they did on that Subaru. You know, I'm going to follow this one because I like to build on it. I like to watch it. You know, how is this different? The big difference is how, how much you're, you're willing to put into the, the non-existent relationship. So let's say, Let's say we we take Mr. Beast for example, right? We keep him since he's <laughs> just beat massive. Him. The let's say that being a fan of Mr. Beast, like oh, I watch his videos and I comment occasionally. Mm-hmm. Somebody who is invested are, is somebody who sees the the performer of Mr. Beast and identifies him as his real life I'd name Jimmy and like goes, oh, I know Jimmy. Jimmy's my friend. He does all this cool stuff. I'm I'm. I'm so totally emotionally invested in everything that he does. And if he does something that I don't like, I'm going to get upset at him and yell at him because he didn't do what I, what I wanted him to do since we're friends. 
Okay. All right. Okay. All right. <laughs> I think I'm trying to get the. <laughs> well, and there's the additional um, issue that if there's a um, an attraction involved, then you get stalkering issues. You get yep. people trying to think that they're in a relationship with somebody that they are not in a relationship with in a in a sexual manner, and that can mm. cause a lot of other issues down the line on that one. Oof. Oof, 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 this is okay. All right, all right. I think I'm kind of get the uh, the uh, people who are who, people who are willing to spend a lot of money on somebody who is way more wealthy than they are because they think that that's that person that they care about and they're doing with everything they can to support them even though they're living way beyond their own. Mm, mm. Yeah, and and trying to get attention too from that person. So every time they they pay them money, they get attention back, and that's what they're craving is that attention. Yeah, because they're my friend, and I want my friend to know that I'm I'm here watching yeah, the stream every day. But that's the thing is that you don't have to pay your friend to like you. Well, I at least I don't. But that could be a sign right there that if you're having to pay somebody to pay attention to you, they may not be your friend. But but I've been watching him since he only had like a hundred subscribers. So I Here's, mean that he I, has to be. I am in that situation on a few few people that I know that. Um, there are streamers. There's a streamer that I was, I I don't want to say I was fr I'm friends with, but you know they when they started small, you were able to develop a sort of relationship with that person. Became a mod in his channel, <laughs> uh, was on his stream from time to time. To, you know, playing games with him. Um, now he's blown up and got big. Uh, I'm still a I'm still a a mod in the channel, but I, I don't visit as often. It's just not, you know. We don't have a relationship that way, uh, but when he was smaller, there was much more chance to just have that interaction that was there. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 there's a couple of like uh, uh, Twitch streamers like um, that I was with when they were well, like they were small, and I think I faded away, and then it was neat when I came back into the Twitch channel and I was like commenting, and they were like, "Oh my god, it's, it's legend!" It was sitting there like ecstatic. I'm like, hey, "Where have you been?" And I was like. <laughs> It's like I told you, man. Well, I, got I get that. I get that because I still, you know, I still uh, subscribe to his channel because you know I want to support him and what he's doing. Um, kind of like a Patreon type of look. That's the way I kind of look at it. Is that I'm just I'm I'm giving him money for the work he's doing because it entertains me when I do want to in, be involved in it. Mm -hmm. So uh, every once in a while, I'll go back in there and go, hey, you know, and it'll pop up and say, hey, you know, you're on your whatever month subscription anniversary so you pop that in there the alert comes on they're like hey you're here i haven't talked to you in a while and we mm -hmm. have back and forth for about five ten minutes but then he goes on and does his thing because he's streaming right now i mean when i when i was watching and his name is grims if you don't remember who he is but um when i started watching him he had just got his like hundredth sub or something like that he was mm -hmm. all happy and, and everything and then now he's streaming to thousands of users at a time so he just there's no way he can uh, give that level of attention to people right it's just not possible right so as larger you get like that the less chance you have to develop those relationships with your community and sometimes the community then gets upset about it yeah. but it's still uh, kind of how you want to be i mean if you want to be bigger and make money at it and do it as a living you have to give up the the option of being a small streamer where you can just hang out with everybody. It's, it, it, there's a line that you get cross at some point where you just can't be what you were before that got you where you were. You have to be something else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, exactly. It's, yeah, it's yeah, but yeah, it's. Oof, man. It's almost like like all right. So like yeah, it, 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 yes. Having a lot of people follow your page of like that, it does become a burden. Like even like when like we'll have the massive page, right? It was, it was nuts. Whenever you posted anything, you know, like thousands of comments. Like oh crap, and and then like even like, I think that's another thing that helped push me off of like um you know the Facebooks too was also was like the amount of people that was in the some of the group pages was like there's a lot of people in here. 
I'm good. <laughs> it's just, it's just, there's so many. And I, and I can, but like I also like the Discord. It's just, yeah, it is. A, yes, it's smaller. Not many people want to leave the other, dis, like the things and go to this other, you know, meant for gamers and communicate here differently. You know, I get that. So like, you know, okay. All right. I see that. All right. So is there any like, uh, how can I put this? And like, uh, so does it, oh, it could be a good thing, right? Like, you know, like you can have like this type of relationship could pull you through some dark times or something like that. But like, yeah, it's there's positive parasocial relationships, but it's more of it depends on where you're able to draw the. Because a lot of the a lot of the bigger issues with people who take into a negative manner are people who are fully emotionally invested, mm-hmm. and they have this sense of entitlement because of their investment. So if like I I've donated to this streamer every time they're streaming and they're not noticing me they're playing a game that I'm playing, they won't let me play with them. What's up with that, etc. Oof, oof. I've seen some of those meltdowns on Twitch yes. of people that like I have donated and they feel so entitled to like I demand in this stream and I demand in this, you know. You know like, right. So you know. So one of the groups of people I I follow a little bit on Patreon and and on YouTube are people who do reaction videos to shows that I've seen or I like. And it's, it's kind of a fun way to watch them watch the things that you liked. And, and instead of having the person sitting next to you watching it and getting that, you know, what did you think about that? It was kind of funny. You get, you're getting that virtually. So it's, it's uh, for people who have interest in video and shows, maybe that not a lot of people like mm-hmm. uh, it's, it's nice to have that kind of camaraderie as it were. Just by watching somebody else do that. So, the the funny part is when there's, there's this one group I know that does this, and they have life issues come up from time to time where, you know, somebody's getting married or we have school or something like that's going on because we're trying to go through college, mm-hmm. and they get their audience start telling them, "Hey, you were supposed to have this on Friday. Your release, your reaction is late. Where is it?" They start and they start demanding that they provide them content when they, you know. Mm-hmm. And and they're like, hey, if you don't if you don't like it, don't follow us. <laughs> this is the way it is. <laughs> uh, so it's it's kind of frustrating when your audience turns on you, mm-hmm. you know. And that's the other part of this this relationship is that you're giving something. You're not really having those in, interpersonal relationships, one on ones with these people, but mm-hmm. they're giving you a bunch of feedback and adulation, and they're making you feel good because they're validating what you're doing. And then one day, if they turn on you, if you do something wrong or something they don't like and they turn, that can be very damaging to a person yeah. um, because they're not just getting negative feelings from one person that they were having an interpersonal relationship, but they're getting from hundreds and hundreds of people. Mm-hmm. Um, and that can be very oppressive. Right. Yeah. And, and I see that. And there's a another streamer, friend of our Twitch page, um, the live streamer, KJ Things. Um, she has she had me technical issues right now and she can't stream this weekend, which is going against her schedule. And I wanted to, as a joke, post something about being upset. And then I realized something like, what if some people don't take this as a joke <laughs> and pile on? <laughs> you know, <laughs> I know right. it's a joke. She'll probably know it's a joke. But how many people won't? Or, you know, worst the case scenario or other case scenario, people get mad at me like, what are you, why are you so upset? I'm like, it's a joke. Take a joke. So, you know, like I've been like, you know, like offhandedly like want to joke about it, but just kind of be like, yeah, I'll just put these little things, but not do this pile on. You're violating your schedule that you posted. This post, you know, you know, you know, because we have like, even here, like in the, uh, um, you know, on the network, like people get upset sometimes, like with, like with the show, like I was very upset with her for not, you know, streaming on, like he streamed on Monday to so Sunday. I was completely upset. I don't care. It's Halloween. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you stream on Sundays. <laughs> Threw me off. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right, all right. So the the so one thing like everyone really wants to hear. Like this is the salacious one. It's like, all right, tell us about the darkness of it. Like the dark. <laughs> like I, I was trying to like like the light side, just to like have a little bit of sweetness, a little honey on it before you bring out the bitter barbs of the how this thing goes dark all right so first off parasocial relationship is something that's been around for a long time of uh, since you know this 
they really started becoming in a prominence and was even given the definition of what it is once we had like the the um the daytime the afternoon talk shows where the one host is talking mm-hmm. to the audience and everybody's love so parasocial relationships are basically just celebrity worship that happens a lot. Mm-hmm. so a lot of the like the stuff like when the selena situation where yeah. the where the the singer was uh, there was a fan of hers that showed up and thought he that he thought that she, he was supporting her and she loved him because her music was about him and he showed up and killed her. What, like, it's with Selena? Yes. Anything for Selena? <laughs> uh, and that's kind of the biggest issue with a lot of parasocial relationships is that people right, don't not know to throw you to off a lot. Not to throw you off too much. I think I am I misremembering that? I thought that was supposed to be like the, the president of her fan club did that. Am I misremembering this? Or is the movie it was, messing it up? It was it was the movie was wrong. It was somebody else who was a fan, but like the president of her fan club was there. Was a okay. terrible okay. person as long the way. Okay, okay, okay. All right. So like yeah, I'm misremembering and the movie is ter- uh, it's messing me up. <laughs> but the biggest issue is that a lot of these people that go overboard in parasocial relationships become what is colloquially known as a stan now. <laughs> Which, not... if you don't know, stan... Uh, what? Why, is it, why is it named stan? The reason there's got to be some stan. background there, right? The reason it's a stan is because of the Eminem song of, of the same name, stan. Because the he candy? was a... There was a song about the candy? <laughs> The two, the two cute imps off of a hell of a oh, boss? Yeah, totally. totally. <laughs> of course, it's the... Stan comes, of course, comes from the Eminem song, Stan, about the fan who is super obsessed with him to the point where he wanted to be just like just like Eminem, so he, like, killed his own wife and himself hmm. because he took it to an extreme level because he felt he was entitled to his interaction back. That's that Stan song with Dio and yeah, sit yep. there, cuts his hair, and gets it all blonde, well, just like that. Like, but the thing, the thing is, is in that song he's talking about. It's basically the letters that the guy's writing, where it's like, you know, why aren't you responding to me? We're, you know, you're supposed to be my friend, and blah blah blah, and and that's the kind of thing you see. Like there was a song by Her um, Naked Ladies uh, back in the '90s, I think it was, called. Uh, um, Straw, had, I can't remember the name now. Um, Straw Hank or something like that. It was, it was basically about a farmer who had um, fallen for this person, the celebrity of some sort. I don't know if it, you know, they don't mm-hmm. get into what what it was. Uh, but he was writing letters saying, you know, I, I know that you love me. You sign your, you don't you don't say I love you to all these other people. You only say it to me. Therefore, I know we're going to be together. So I'm coming to meet you, and I'm bringing my guns with me. And, and it gets really dark. <laughs> in that song and it's it's not it's a something that's been an issue for i mean we can go back hundreds and hundreds of years i mean this is something that people like you know shakespeare and things like th- things that have been celebrities in their day always had to deal with but now right. that social media is here and we have technology where we can have a lot more interactions that can be perceived as being two ways but they're not that's where the lines get blurry and you have a lot more of this happening. Right. A lot like uh, now that that all celebrities can be verified on Twitter so you know it's them, then anything they say on Twitter, all their fans will be staring at it looking for their next thing they're gonna say. Mm-hmm. And hold it every single word they have under a microscope because if it's it's not something that they wanted them to do, then it's wrong and they, they should figure themselves out because that's not how this works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like yeah, I, mean, it, I was gonna say like the over a, the over analyzation of like also people's tweet like tweets or Instagram posts. Like the I, I was just reading about this one like because people are freaking out over a Chris Pratt um, Instagram post about his wife like and they're over analyzing it to the point like this thing lost all context, all meaning, and the way you're trying to say it, you brought it to a pace where the photo doesn't leave context to where you brought it to, and the evidence of what the thing was going good to. There's things that you could be wrong with Chris Pratt, okay? I get it. I get it. His Garfield's going to be trash. I get it, okay? All right? No one can stop top Bill Murray, okay? I get it. I get it. (laughs) 
<laughs> you know, it was a meme, right? <laughs> Yeah, I know it's a meme. <laughs> no, it's a meme. I'm also upset that Stan's in the Webster, Webster's Dictionary, okay? Doing this research for the show. Why is Stan in the Dictionary? Okay, I understand why memes in the Dictionary. That makes sense, okay? But why Stan in the Dictionary? Because it's become so predominant now. That because it's a word that has a definition. Exactly. <laughs> and that's what a dictionary is for, is to have words that we agree upon having this specific definition so that we can all go, okay, we all agree on what this means. Uh, uh. So, so what? The Urban Dictionary is really just like the cooling the cooling saucer of words before it can elevate to the uh, actual Merriam-Webster's Dictionary? Yes. So, the, yeah, the Urban Dictionary is really a case, a, a place where you hear a, a, a word that you don't know the meaning of. Mm -hmm. It's not in the dictionary yet because it hasn't become as, as ingrained into the social uh, fabric yet. Culture. But people are using it. Mm -hmm. So you want to know what it means so that you use it right or understand what this person's trying to convey when they say it. So you go mm -hmm. to the Urban Dictionary where somebody has put it up and said, hey, this is kind of what we agree that this means. And now everybody can build off that. It becomes more and more ingrained. It mm -hmm. becomes an actual word. And there we go. Yeah, okay. similarly, because like um, another big place where you see a lot of this, this stan culture is um, with K-pop. With Korean pop music, and they 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 have a term for over obsessive fans uh, called sasang, which are sasang fans. They are the fans that they they perceive as obsessive and over emphasize on certain groups that they love. Mm. And well. the thing is that sasang fans are scary. <laughs> They're scarier than a lot of. Other now, now, to be fair, there is a level of celebrity things that some people do in order to increase that belief and feelings in people. Mm -hmm. And K-pop is one of uh, is one of those that really heavily do this. Where it's not just hey, we're doing this music and people like it. It's they are in their marketing their. Uh, reaching out they're doing things to manipulate the thought processes of people to get them to like them to feel this strongly about them because that makes them money the stronger mm. people feel about you the more stuff you can sell them so they're they're pushing that to make money off the people and those people are then responding and then they're going hey wait a minute you know we didn't they're taking it too far as it were but don't worry we'll get we'll get to the the more extreme version of that in Japan here in a minute. Uh, but the, the reason that like these, the, the Sasang fans are, are perceived to be scary is because they have a tendency to, there's a lot more news in reporting about how far they're willing to go for their favorite band. Mm -hmm. So to bring down other bands. What, what do you mean, like, like, because like we have like boy bands and stuff like that here, you know, here in the so, West, you know, like, you know. But what, what do you mean, like, so I, have, I have several examples. Um, there is a there was a member named Yuno know, uh, of a band called TVXQ, who uh, some Sasame fans broke into their house, okay, and put glue in his OJ, and. And then he proceeded to have to go to the hospital and vomit blood because the glue adhered to his throat. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> because they didn't like him. Because it was, they were that's a rival band that they they like that they don't like because it's not who they support. So like did this group have their own band, or they were just like stands of this other one? So, to the point it, that it's it's saucing fans of a different group. So they were just yes. It, it's it's like, are you a Beatles fan or are you a uh, Rolling Stones fan? So it's kind of like that. It's like if the Rolling Stones fans and the Beatles fans started having gang fights in the street, right? Oh, yeah, exactly. oh no, no! It's more like if the Beatles fans. And the Rolling Stones fans decide that they're going to take it out on the members of the band. Mm. Oh, that's true. Yeah, uh, I see. Yeah. yeah, yeah, with the Monkees fans in the corner eating paste. 
<laughs> I'm sorry. Like, if you like the monkeys, you don't need that's to go fine. down and open up this can of worms. Okay. <laughs> right. But uh. there's like, there's there are plenty of there are things where they've that one of the band EXO they they had a tour in China when they were leaving. They had 20 different cars of fans mm-hmm. following them to the airport because they were they wanted to follow that they really cared about them, you know. And the 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 kind of abuse is so mentally straining mm-hmm. that one one of the people in the band uh, of EXO also basically stated that he has like a victim mentality. So he's afraid to interact with a lot of fans because mm-hmm. he's afraid what's going to happen to him. Oof. And that's not counting in the the attempt at kidnapping, the the fans breaking into the houses, uh, fans sending letters that are like written in their own blood, you know, the usual stuff. Oof, oof. And th- and this is why I send all my fan mails through like Paul, make Paul re- producer Paul reads them all. <laughs> This is this is why right here, you know. Yeah, it's, so it's a very scary environment that a lot of these performers are scared about, and they have a lot. They've been pulling back a lot of their interactions with fans, like directly, because of stuff like this. Mm. So this is why, like, you see, you'll see a lot of uh, like um, uh, like American celebrities where like, oh, they've got these really cool like L.A. beach houses, but they're really just there for vacation, and then they end up like living in like BFE inside the US somewhere away from everybody so if you're there and you, you can seem out you, you will just seem out of place well, the, and the thing about uh, the K-pop and the J-pop stuff is that it the bands aren't really the members of the band the bands are a marketing company that put them together they like there are K-pop bands where you reach a certain age you're out you know so they have to keep renewing people, members of the band. So it's not, you know, they're the ones that are doing a lot of the pushing and the manipulation, not the actual artists themselves. So right. what do you mean, like, they're not members of the band? So, so there's not, like, a group of guys coming together making a band? I have a That's perfect example for that. I have a perfect example for that. This actually transitions perfectly into the, the Japanese idol culture. Okay. In Japan, they have their agencies that like to make uh, idol bands. And what they end up doing is that they recruit different people in, usually usually more women, but there are some I- young men idol bands. They put them together and they create how they look, how they sound, how they're, how they're meant to be perceived by the fans. And they're put through constant singing and dancing and modeling training so that way they're good enough to to be a part of this idol group. But the talent agency has all rights to that. And their whole purpose to put these bands together is to make idol groups that are profitable, that that purposely profit off of parasocial relationships. Parasocial relationships with fans. What? And <laughs> yes. And Marno is right that there is a point where they graduate, meaning that they get too old for the band. Which is usually for women about twenty five. And for men it's their thirties or forties, because you know how that is. Uh but yeah, once once a once a performer gets too old, they get graduated out and they bring in one of their junior idols to fill that spot. Which junior idols can start training as idols from from the age of three. So the so these agencies have like they go out and find people, put them into their little camps, train them, indoctrinate them, mind wash them a little bit, uh, and teach them these skills and what they want. This is how you do this. this is how you dance this way. This is how you sing this way, and and they go through those ranks so that when a position opens up or they decide to start a new band, they have a cadre of people to do that. with. Yeah. So they have, so the- think, think about, because you, we mentioned a touched on just briefly, we touched on the monkeys before the monkeys were kind of put together the same way. There was a, it was a, 
uh, decision to make a band that would be for a TV show that would be, you know, fun for the kids and they could sell advertising, right? But the band got together and then rebelled against that mm-hmm. fairly quickly, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and and it wasn't quite as polished or designed to be specifically like we're seeing now with the K-pop and the J Idol stuff. So it's also important to, to realize that for the Idol stuff, it uh, the Idol culture in Japan is a billion dollar industry. Like bi- billion, like yen billion or billion, you or uh, no dollars, like no dollars. Who's dollars? I, Not yen. <laughs> <laughs> one billion USD a year industry as of 2019. Whoa. Are kind of producing like quality. To, I also heard they mention that Is they it... control their personal lives too because idols have to be considered pure. So they can't be in any relationships. They can't drink or smoke or do anything. They completely control how they're perceived by the public. So, hold on. You know, this we started billion. down this path. We did start down this path in the seventies and eighties with mm-hmm. some younger girls who were like, you know, put out there like a Tiffany's and things like that, where they mm-hmm. were trying to do this kind of same thing. Mm-hmm. But American culture somehow didn't grab onto it quite that way. Mm-hmm. We have a little bit of it here, but it's not nearly at this level. Mm-hmm. And I think it's just more a case of the 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 people they're doing this with are musicians and artists. And in our culture, artists are much more notoriously screw you. I'm doing my own thing. You can't tell me what to do. Very rebellious, right? Yeah. These, I, these people are being groomed since three, or you know, or a little maybe a little older, but they're mm-hmm. being groomed to be this, right? Mm-hmm. So they don't question it or mm-hmm. the authority as much. Yeah. Well, like some of our artists do, like uh, because like a uh, rage uh, against the machine has turned in rage for the machine. Um, F you, I will do what you tell me. Uh, <laughs> just the other thing that's just age. Yeah, that's oh, just that's age. yeah. yeah. All right, I want to talk about this about... billion. No, no, no. Oh. We're going to talk about this billion. Where does this billion come from? Is this song sales? I, I oh, cool, cool. I got you. Small. It's just, I got it's you. Small. I got you. This is records. So, it's just, it's so like, the music is the, the before we get to the fan contribution, which is a big thing. Uh, yeah. Idols are basically used for everything in Japan. So like they they use commercials. They're most of the advertising for around Japan is idols. They they put them on TV dramas. They ho- they're hosts on like variety shows. Um, to the point where in Japan, uh, since 2010, they've had at least 40 different anime series based on idols. To the point where voice actresses have become idols from voicing characters in anime. Nani the. <laughs> Hold on, but what? So they make people the idol. They make idols. Idol factory. So the idol factory. Sorry, I. Yes. My brain broke here a little bit. Hold on. The idol yes. factory. Okay. So they got the idol factory, and they pump mm-hmm. out these people to just do whatever they need to. Like, we need you to act. Go act. We need you to sing. We need you to do this. Yes. You're dancing in this background of this thing. So, so. Yes. So this uh, is oh, yeah. this is so much, so much, someone looked at the monkeys and and then Disney and said, "I bet we could do this better," or or is he, <laughs> this is just insane. Yes. All right. And but that that's that's just one half they, of the aspect of the money and, they and they did it right and they did it better because they were willing to really dive into the manipulation of the fan base. Mm. And yes. that marketing aspect, and and making it part of the culture so in, so much that people don't even see how this is a problem. The other half of that that billion that comes in is based on their fans, and usually, um, if you've known about mobile games or anything, they talk about that. They have this thing called whales, where okay. the which a small number of people spend a ton of money to keep a game going. Uh, mm-hmm. That's kind of what they have in Japan, but they're called Wato, which are which are very passionate fans who will show up to every show and every event. They have their own, they even create their own dances to connect with their idols, and their whole thing is that they 
the idols get get paid more with they have more fans because Wado fans are willing to just buy all the merch and, and products they endorsed from their favorite their bias or their favorite member of the idol group uh, to the point where they're able that there has been many times where men have quit their jobs dumped their entire life savings just to support one idol and the most interaction they get is potential meet and greets where they can shake their hands for like five seconds wow wow all right. Well, I'm uh, I'm gonna do a meet and greet uh, this Friday. Uh, Five dollars and check. <laughs> uh, no, I'm good. It's so good. it's so <laughs> ridiculous that there's one company in Japan that will give you paid time off if you're biased graduates. So uh, if your favorite if for, your favorite member grief? of your favorite idol group, you can take bereavement leave when they graduate. <laughs> What? <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. All right. Hey, uh, uh, this, when you say like goofy stuff like that, can you make sure you warn the audience to make sure they're if they're listening in, in, in the car, hands on ten and two, okay? <laughs> <laughs> what just, what just, oh no, I can't come to work today. Mm, this person that I watch in all these TV shows, movies is graduating, so I can't make it. Just can't today. Yeah, just the, can't. The, they just go, hey. Uh, this is my this is my favorite idol's graduation. I gotta go. I, I can't be there today. And since these idol groups are made to have parasocial relationships with their fans, the fans get even more uh, negatively affected or hurt if their idol or their bias breaks what their set character is supposed to be. Mm. So if your character is the sweet member of the band and you're not sweet all the time, they get upset at you. Oof. Oof. And then the, the more dark shit happens. Oof. Oof. All right. So, all right. All right. All right. Like, personal story. Personal story time. Off tangent. A little off tangent. All right. So, Power Rangers. <laughs> <laughs> the American SPD, okay? Which is the best yeah. Power Rangers series. I don't care what anyone says. If you think of something else, that's cool. Enjoy what you like, but you're still wrong. So, the American Power Rangers SPD series. It kind of broke me at Force Con when you find out, right, like that Sky is really is the the <laughs> trickster of the group. He played all the tricks, but in the show, he was the stay. <laughs> this is like it's just like, huh? This shows are more goofy. This is, you know, it's it like this. Just uh, it kind of broke me a little bit. I was like, oh man, I can't believe that's a tr-, you know because you, there's always I, like yeah, you know, usually there's somebody like playing tricks on this uh, on this uh, on sets like even. And supernatural. Everyone like there's famous scenes of like D. Everyone talks about the like, Jensen and Eccles uh, playing pranks on people on the set and, and warning people like, "Hey, be careful! They're gonna play pranks on you." You know. Yeah, now, so. now imagine, now imagine that same Power Rangers thing you were talking about, uh-huh. and that same actor uh, uh-huh. from the moment he's on that show until basically uh, he dies, he has to act like that. He has to act like the character he was playing in Power. Oof, oof, I don't think he could do that. Oops. Yeah. Because betrayed Watto fans are are just as scary as K pop fans. Mm. Mm. Um I've already told you guys about this once before. Uh a Watto found an idol by looking at a picture they posted and used the reflection in their eyes to find their location. Okay, so I remember hearing that story. That was nuts. <laughs> Amazing worth detective work. Waste of talent, right? <laughs> um, you know, it was just there are there are people out there that are gone missing that little like that 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 talent is can be used for or just finding bounties. Okay, that you could be making millions off of if you've got the skill for this, and you use it for that. <laughs> oh, come on! And the worst part is because of how how the culture is viewed. Anybody who kind of talks out of turn of what's supposed to be there uh, mm-hmm. gets blackballed. So there's there was an idol uh, whose name was Maho Yamaguchi whose house was broken into and she was assaulted. Because of, uh, she she acted like a way a fan didn't want him to and then she basically has been blackballed and silenced by the idol industry. Because that's not what her character would do. 
because she talked as soon as she was talking about it, that could that shows that there's possible harm in the idol company, in the idol industry. So why talk about it? Okay, all right, all right. Just just like in the American culture, when when nobody wanted to talk about some of the things that the producers were doing to the uh, you know casting couches and the the sexual assault that was happening to to male actors and things like that that was mm-hmm. all kept underground because nobody wanted that to come out because it would it would impact their money right yeah yeah that that even ha- also happens as of recently in Japan one there is a current situation where a agency got sued because one of their junior idols um was under so much pressure that she committed suicide because the because they since she was considered a lower rank idol member since she was a junior idol member, um, the people in charge were just harassing her and using their power to manipulate, intimidate, and just and uh, negatively affect her mind state to the point where she couldn't be here anymore. Yeah, take take uh, an example. Um, take what happened to Brittany, yeah. and her trying to grow up and being so much under the public eye and everybody trying to handle her and, and manipulate her surroundings. So she kind of went crazy a little bit. She had emotional breakdowns. She had a lot of issues. Multiply that by like 20 and you're starting to get what's going on in the J-pop and K-pop yes. scene. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm. There's even there's one story where there's a uh, there's an idol named Mayu Tom- Tomito who was stabbed 27 times by somebody who broke into her house. She lived, okay, that's good. But she good. was stabbed 27 times by a fan that didn't like how her personality. But, but it's a fan of the group, but they didn't like her. She wasn't their bias. She wasn't their favorite. She. And she did something that they didn't like, so they stabbed her 27 times. <laughs> then why would anyone want to do any of this? Why, why, why would anyone want to be an idol? Then? Because it's a $1 billion industry, and if you start at fucking three, and, you don't and know that. the other thing too is, is the idols are getting so much adulation from the fans that there's a love of it. Recent, So there's a new documentary coming out from um, uh, Paul McCartney about you know his life and the Beatles and everything else and in there he's talking about how when they started you know and they had all the girls after them they're like yeah we cultivated that we wanted that we were you know sexy guys and we're trying to be pretty and everything because we loved the adulation and they're like after a couple years we didn't really want that anymore but it was kind of you couldn't just turn it off Mm -hmm. so then they had to kind of try to get away from it right Um, so that's kind of what you see. You see that there's there's an emotional lift that you get from people screaming and loving you and, and being agile of you and, and you being popular that they go along with all this stuff until the bad stuff starts creeping in. Then they try to break out of it and they can't because they're locked in because it's so much of the culture there. So it's ingrained into the culture much more than it is here. Here we would you know see somebody acting like that we would tell them no that's wrong you don't do that we don't we don't do the you know day off work because of you know your guy retiring thing it's that doesn't happen right and the closest we get to that i think is maybe uh, wrestling fans i don't know <laughs> you might think of it that way um well, I can but still, mu- musicians are the same way i mean we do that with musicians and with with uh actors here but not nearly to that level and it's not nearly as accepted in the culture to go that far down that path. So you didn't take the day off when you found out Metallica cut their hair? <laughs> Metallica? My, I, if Metallica were to start playing country music, I wouldn't care. I don't care about that. <laughs> okay, <well. laughs> oof, oof, oof. The, the other thing is that, no you know, since, since idols are everywhere in Japan, um, it's kind of the same thing as what for a lot of our younger youth see like influencers are because influencers are everywhere. They're making a ton of money. All they have to do is, is do this and do this. And then I could, I could do that. I could dance. I could sing. I don't, I don't mind. 
yeah, I get paid tons of money, and then at 25, I get to, to graduate and not have to do it anymore. But are you willing to put in the the 10 years of misery beforehand? Hmm. And it's not all misery. It starts off pretty cool. I think it's like seven years of misery. Like, you get the first three years of, this is great, and then, uh, this isn't so great. Well, it, it, it depends the alternative. on... alternative. It depends on what, at what point you start. Because if you start as a junior yeah. idol, that's misery. Because you don't have any power, and they they and they're teaching you how to do this, and mm -hmm. you have no influence on anything. But if you become a part of a main group and you become the center, mm -hmm. which is the one that everybody likes, then then you're having that great time. Even in idol groups, they're like, not all of them are happy. Mm. But look at but look at what happens at that age. Though. You're going to go to school, whether or not you go to one of their schools or to regular school. So you're being forced to do something that you probably don't want to do. Hmm. So why not do the thing that's going to get you the popularity? And the alternative is, oh, and I have to get a regular job and work until I'm 60, you know, 70, and never have any fun, and never get any popularity, and hardly make a tenth of the money that I would pop be making for 10 years as an idol. Hmm. So it, it to them, they make the calculation that it's worth it. All right. I want to roll back. Or their parents do. Or I want to roll back. Do. Oh, yeah. I want to roll back a little bit. I want to circle back. Let's circle back on something. You mentioned these ranking things. Like, like, is it just senior, junior, or is it like, oh, you're number one, number two, number three rankings? So, you know, like these ranking there's, things. There's two different sets of rankings. There's in the if you're actually in the idol group, okay. there is ranking. There's popularity rankings of the members of the group. And if you're the most popular, you, you're considered the center, or they put you in the middle, so you're the spotlight. Mm. So the idol, so the, and then as the popularity goes further and further down, you get pushed to the back. So you're like, you're there, but you're in the back row, so nobody cares. Mm. 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 Then, and then once in the actual agency system, there are full idols, and then there's the junior idols. And the junior idols are the ones who are trying to learn so they can join the the join the full idol group. Mm -hmm. But if they're but they don't get treated like full idols yet. Mm. So the so the agency has way more control and pressure on those younger ones because they just, they they're lower on the totem, but we don't care about you. You don't have fans yet. We don't care. Mm. Yeah, I know you're tired from Trying that, trying to doing that same dance routine for the past twelve hours. So what? I don't care. Oof! <laughs> You're making it hard to enjoy some of my uh, <laughs> things. I have to enjoy. <laughs> go, go back and listen to some of the interviews uh, later in life of somebody like Shirley Temple and what they went through for the our, you know the our gang people. Uh, and the the conditions they worked under when they were kids, it wasn't mm. it wasn't all sunshine and roses back in the day. <laughs> we put a lot of laws in place specifically because of how these people were treated when they were younger. Yeah, because it did like it supposedly like gotten like slightly better. Like um, you can listen to uh, like uh, Judy Sweet's uh, podcast. Uh, she was not pop. She does I don't know if she has podcast, but Judy Sweet uh, uh, was it was her name on Full House was Stephanie the middle child. I, I, I'm a middle child, so I like to. I like to. When she was on uh, Steve O's, uh, um, what uh, uh, Steve O, who lives in a van now, blew his money, now lives in a van. Um, who saw but, that coming? I I, <laughs> whatever, he lives in a van. It's all med probably all medical bills. Probably nothing like a little bit of drugs. All medical bills <laughs> and future oh, no, medical bills. Like, yeah. Steve O's clean now, by the way. Just like I said, it's all medical bills now. <laughs> fixing, yeah, yeah. yeah, fixing the years because he yeah. looks super old now. And it's like, wow, that's anti. Oh, man, sh does he got lotion? What lotion is he using? <laughs> he needs more lotion. <laughs> but anyways, um, that's where I got Steve. Steve pretty cool. Steve was cool guy. He, you know, and he's gone through a freaking a lot. Anyways, um, jo he had Jody Sweet on his podcast. They was talking about like you know, like growing up, like when they when they started full, well, she did Full House. She was sitting there reading like the script and stuff like at three, five years old, you know, so they're like super young and they allowed her to like go to like, the school she wanted to go to it's the, the on cast school, you know, and then it was just like this, that seemed okay. You know, it's like, I feel more comfortable hearing that type of story. That thing 
that <laughs> that makes me go like oof, oof. I'm gonna do more research of what I listen to. What? There. What? <laughs> what? What? You 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 don't you don't want you don't want Gunther to to go and have to learn a dance routine every day for the next six months, uh, twelve hours a day. Like uh, pageant moms do with their kids and get them, mm-hmm. you know, dance lessons and how to be a how to be a pageant specialty and go on and yeah, that doesn't happen here. Yeah, totally well, not. yeah, well, if you guys want to know, uh, Gunther is very rebellious. Uh, the one thing that I don't care like her act or activity that I just kind of do because she like her friend is doing it and I kind of pay for it to do. You know, she freaking loves. I don't care about it. I'm not. I don't really push her to this thing. I don't care about this activity, but she freaking loves this. It's just a little like gymnastics thing that she's into. This is like, like, you know, like the junior gymnastics, cause she, you know, she's going to be way too tall to be like a gymnast. <laughs> she's already taller than most. Um, but she has fun in it. She loves it. She loves it. Swimming class. Try to get it to do swimming. No, <laughs> she refused. And this is the one thing I want her to be able to do. You know, like, you need to learn to swim. One, you know, this will save your freaking life one day, you know? You know, or you may save someone else's life to learn how to swim. She don't want to do it. She doesn't want to do it. She doesn't. And I just, and I'm frustrated and proud at the exact same time. <laughs> like, I'm so proud of you for, for rebelling against what I want you to do. You will do the thing, though. <laughs> you will do it, though. No, I'm so proud of you. Do it, though. This is a good stop. <laughs> and I did tell her, like, hey, once you learn, hey, we can stop, but first you gotta learn. <laughs> once you get it, you can tread water, go to the side of the pool, you can be an okay swimmer. You don't have to be a strong swimmer. You know if you go into, like, too rough, you know you have to be a strong swimmer. You understand the difference. You know? Which is like my wife. I try to tell her, like, uh, there's a difference between swimming in the pool and swimming in the ocean. You know, even like I brought her in Lake Michigan, like, okay, this uh, this current gets kind of strong. He's like, yeah, there's a big difference between swimming in a big body of water versus a pool. The pool really doesn't have currents. It's not pulling you, you know. <laughs> you know, it's kind of stagnant out there. Like, that thing will, you know, it'll grab you and just take you along. So you start floating, and next thing you know, you know, you can be down the other side of the beach, you know. But the teacher had to swim like they did to me in the Navy. How did, how did they, they teach you, Brad? Right home. Um, get you in this huge swimming pool and get you in line and say, "Okay, and you push you off this platform and say, okay, let's uh, see how long you go." <laughs> no, no, I'm being a little facetious. But I mean, when I was a kid, I, I, I doubt it. I was five or six, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, enough to, to kind of tread water and whatever. But I know some people who are like, "Let's just take them and pop them in the in the water and see how they do," and yeah. then we know where we need to go from there. Well, I wanted to go earlier, like last year at this time, but <clears throat> the beer disease happened, and uh, so it delayed everything. You know, I wanted to get her in early, you know, because I seen all this stuff. But and then it's really then it became really really hard because like the one out the because there's tons of like places you can teach them to, like to, to learn how to swim. But I wanted to go to the school that's close because it's like five minutes down the road from my house. <laughs> I can easily get there. Versus like go to the Y. Yeah, the Y is cool. That's 25 minutes down the road. Well, five minutes down the road. And that one's always booked. So I found one, which started, like, you know, like uh, on Saturday morning, which worked out great. You know, I kicked them out of the house and, you know, they go swimming. But, you know, all right. So, so sorry for the detour of my personal life. <laughs> that's fine. We'll, we'll jump from this this nice, wholesome story. And um, we'll, we'll bring it back to, to the well, U.S. and stuff around us okay well like, and, if that's the case then uh, uh, we technically need to stop for like a small break technically okay you know so you know uh this is when the uh the so insert break break here so i don't have the control of the, the big old you know broadcasting thing that think can insert these things but i do have control of twitch and i can set a break there and so it actually, like, will give like a like a small little ad break and give us a like, break and actually get a break period in the audio. So I'm gonna do the small one here real quick. Okay. Yeah. Which you know technically even to like pre-roll as we could talk because like the people if you're subbed to the channel the Twitch channel you're actually are uh, viewing us talk here in real time without having to see the pre-roll ad. So congratulations on subbing. <laughs> oh. 
Oh. Yeah, don't you like idol culture, Harry? Don't you like it? Don't you love it? It's a, it's it's different. <laughs> All right, everybody, welcome back from the break. Uh, for those who did subscribe to and watching us on Twitch, we did talk a little bit um, over that, so it was, we had we had, we had fun there. Um, so I want to bring it back to more things that are more going to affect us and possibly a lot of people in the future right now. So we're going to bring it back to uh, the U.S. and like the influencer culture. Okay. Because even though we don't want to like admit it, but there's like a research done in 2019 that 72% of, of people b- between 13 and 38 mm-hmm. follow influencers. Okay. And, and like, half of the children in that thing would gladly become them if they have if they're given the opportunity. Can you define what an influencer is? Yeah, like a like a like a Twitch streamer, a YouTuber, or somebody who uh can do advertisements on like Instagram and TikTok and all those fun things. People that have technically have influence on other people around them. Mm. I can't believe people would do that. You know, people would sell out to the cor- sell out to corporations. I'm I'm under yeah. such spotlight. That's why I have to use my looms de- uh, deodorant you know, to keep me good. You know, but who would do that? Oh my god! Who, who would want to you know just make themselves public and what their thoughts and views are just right. uh, to people like that? Just just for people to to like them. I mean, that's that seems kind of kind of out there. Because the big thing is is that the the influencer market is now the modern day celebrity for a lot of people. And b- even though they're still the big movie star celebrities, a lot of people don't really gravitate to them as much as they used to. Now it's more about, well, this is the person I follow on Instagram and this is the person I enjoy on, on YouTube and et cetera. Well, th- the thing is, is we have, we have the technology has changed the things up, right? So it used to be, you got your news from one or two sources. You got your, uh, entertainment from a couple different sources. It wasn't so spread out as it is now. So now uh, there's a lot more entertainment choices. There's a lot more people who are celebrities, as it were. Uh, but there's very there's fewer huge celebrities like there used to be because of that. Because of the uh, dilution of where we're getting our entertainment from. Right. And because of that, there's a lot of nor like would you consider like normal or everyday people being celebrities now? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that I mean, people's I yeah. I I can get into uh, you know back when dinosaurs roamed the earth here. Um, <laughs> the thought of like me becoming a uh, you know a popular musician or an actor or something like that it was like wouldn't even know where to get started. You'd have to be you'd have to move to New York or L A. You'd have to try to get discovered. You'd have to work and fight in order to get there and so few people ever ever made it that way so it's like it there's no real chance but if i had had the tools that people have today to to get their voice out and to and to become popular like that just by sitting at home and doing the thing like we're doing right here mm-hmm. if i could have done this when i was 16 17 years old when i mm-hmm. actually looked good <laughs> you know i did i wasn't such a horror to look at as it were, um, I, I think there could have been a much different trajectory for me and for a lot of people because we didn't have the opportunity. Now, like you said, 54% of the people are like, yeah, I want to do that. And it's because it's not as much of an investment. It's not that hard. You just go do it. Right. right. Well, Brian Holt, I'm and- not going to let you bully your parents and just let you get away with that. No, no, no. If everyone can see Brian Holt in, in the camera, he looks really good. You know, he's got that that classic, you know, like mature men's beard going on. It looks nice. Okay. All right. All right. Nice, long, flowing hair. He could easily get a shampoo commercial with his hair. Okay. All right. <laughs> but see, see, Brian Holt, that's the other thing is that, like, now at this point, you don't even have to have the physical appearance to make it happen. There's people like Corpse Husband who doesn't show his face and who kind of has like a, who has a very low, deep voice. Hmm? And then, and then there's a, there's, there's a, and then there's, called Lesbian Nerdy. She has an avatar that yes. she uses as an avatar of what I pretty much think she probably looks like, but she's never done a face reveal. And yeah. 
she lives in Korea. She mm-hmm. does, you know, she does this Wheel of Time stuff. Yeah. And she's hilarious. And I need to find out where she's got her avatar software from because it's top notch. It's better than anything I've seen from like Face Rig or any of these others. Right. Um, but yeah, there's a great way to go about it doing that way mm-hmm. um, to kind of hide your face. But mm-hmm. the VTuber market. The yeah. reality is when when things are now so inundated with so many people involved into it you they're ex, the audiences are expecting to see your face and and so they can become connected to you easier through that mechanism right hmm. um it, so there's, there's a give and take there yeah it, de- it depends on what it is like like we talk about like we'll go to that point to talk about like vtubers because vtubers their their whole thing is that is their character and even even if there's person behind it, it's a lot of their character is what they still bring out. And right. yeah, it's, it's how much how much so you can't be boring, you know, right? Like like you know maybe myself, you can't you have to actually be entertaining and put on a show and be, you know, something that people want to go see. And uh, that that's it. It's either that or you rely upon your your looks and. If you have both of those things, you know, you've got a much easier road to hoe than if you don't. But that's just the reality of, of life, as it were. So, Right. You have your personality. You have your, your personality, your looks, or your talent. Hmm. Because there's a bunch of people that, that are on, like, Twitch that, are, that only are followed because they're massive in this, this particular game because they're really good at it. Or this makeup artist is really great at doing... Um, Halloween or horror makeup, so everybody follows this person because they're so good at this. Shout out to Kami. Oh, sorry. <laughs> good old Kami. Bane, yeah, like, Bane of Paladins, but awesome. <laughs> uh, he's kind of trying to get away from Paladins now. So. I, I can understand it. I, I've gotten away he, from Paladins. He's, he's going through some stuff. He's having some fun. But that's, you know, I do enjoy Kami and I do follow him a little bit. So Yeah. And I will say that that not all these communities are like following streamers and having a, a some sort of parasocial relationship doesn't always turn into awful. It doesn't always bloom into terrible things. There have been plenty of times where, since this is some of the stuff I watch, like there is a YouTuber named Watson who did, who decided that she was going to do a twelve hour stream mm-hmm. to donate to donate to charity. And once she hit, she was planning on adding like more, like do more things when she mm-hmm. hits like. A certain point, and then by the first hour, she hit the million that she won for charity. Um, another one, um, Iron Mouse. She, mm-hmm. she, um, in her personal life, some of the stuff she's she's revealed is that she has uh, some really bad medical issues. Mm-hmm. Um, and she was starting to stream, but she was going to need donations so that way she can get a, a new desk, so that way she's not in her bed. And she has a way to get out of her bed and get to the desk and do that. It's because because that's the only way that she feels like a person is doing these streams. Because mm-hmm. she can't interact with humans because of her um, uh, her immune system. Yeah. And before she was even done explaining, she had hit her goal. Oh, wow. And uh, Iron Mouse is a VTuber, right? Yes. Okay. Right. Just want to make sure but we talk about the same But there's plenty of those Iron kind Mouse. of things of like, Good that happen within these communities that that can come from the the that kind of connection with the people that are watching. And and I think with especially with like the Twitch and YouTube communities like that, you see a lot more of that than you do see the negative. I mean, you see the negative stuff in some of these chats, but most of the times the streamer gets rid of it quick. You know, the person gets banned. You know, so anybody who's causing trouble are out. But uh, there's a lot of positive stuff happening in in all the streams that i usually go through um and, and if it's not being positive then i won't be in that stream so right that's part of it so that's that's what a lot of these people get popular now there are some popular streamers who are popular because they're a-holes yes right we and will not we will not name names but i know exactly who the assholes. I know. and it's just like why are you people watching this guy he's such an such an asshole and then people are just like that's he's funny you know he's he's ribbit on everybody and it's just like yeah, but he's not—he's not really funny, 
right. you know, what's wrong with you people that you like this? You yeah, know, it's yeah. the thought process I have. But yeah, because uh, like, but lot... I see this all the time where you're, you're in there and somebody's having a bad day, and then other people will come in and tell the streamer, "Hey, you know, you know, I'm going through a whole bunch of stuff, but coming here and being in this community and and listening to you and having fun with everybody else in the chat has made me feel better. It has helped me in some way." Um, through a de- negative or a dark space. So a lot of that happens that you don't just don't hear about because mostly because it's kind of common, but also because it's, there's no sensation, sensationalism to it. You'll hear right. about the bad stuff, the doxing and everything else. You'll hear about that stuff, but you'll hear about all of the positives that happen. I will get into that in a second, but okay, another great example is uh, Jacksepticeye. He's doing a thing that's, the the first two weeks of December, he's doing a thing called Thanksgiving, where anybody who's streaming, you can apply to be a part of it, and it all goes to to our to a charity to help build houses for people who need them. Oh, nice! And and it, it's open to anybody who wants to stream. They just have to sign up, and then it all goes to that fund. And isn't extra life next week? I think so. So yeah, next week, extra life is a thing where oh. all the Twitch, Twitch, Twitch streamers get together, and they're all doing things for um, for children's. Uh, mm-hmm. that's what was it? Yeah. Yep. So, yeah. I, mean, yeah. I, I watch Co Carnage a lot. So I mean, Co, um, not so much lately, but you know, I used to watch him a lot. And then he's always doing that, where he he starts off and says, "We're going to do this charity. We're going to try to get this much money in extra life," and he hits it almost immediately. He's like, okay, let's stretch that goal, and he'll do another mm-hmm. one, and he'll just keep hitting those over and over and over again because he'll go on a twelve-hour stream and just do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because even though there's a lot of bad, and the bad gets publicized a lot more, and it's a lot harder to ignore the bad. There's tons and tons of good, mm-hmm. and yes, I am going to probably talk about more bad after this because there's still more stuff I want to talk about. But <laughs> there's lots of good that happens in in these communities because. Do you have that connection with the person that you're dealing with? All right. <laughs> but the other issue is that a lot of people, but the, the neg- going back to the, the negative part of it, like Correct, the negative yeah. aspects of being a streamer and all that stuff is stuff like doxing, yeah. which doxing. He, he touched on, which is extra scary for somebody like, like a VTuber who doesn't show their face. Correct. Who's doing things or corpse husband who wants to keep their their identities private so that way because they want to live like a separate life from whatever's happening yeah and a lot Um, of their swatting yeah Mm -hmm. which is if you don't know what swatting is is then if somebody if somebody's watching a streamer and they're upset about how good they are or or they don't like them they will call in a bomb threat Mm -hmm. to their house and swat will show up in the middle of their stream and kick down their door right and 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 a lot of people see this as like this harmless, but this is not. People have died from swatting, swatting attempts, and that's why like I, anytime like a lot of streamers so like that come up and they like, do these things, like I, I try to warn, like, hey, find out who your local police department, tell them who you are, tell them what you do, because if a lot of them, especially, have becoming well aware of this, things are happening around the country because the one not only does this protect you, but also protects the of uh, the police department because you know like a lot of people you know, own guns to defend themselves. And if the police are going there rushing it because they think they're going in there to defend somebody, to protect somebody, and all you're hearing because you got your headset on is someone kicked your door down, you could end up returning fire. You get hurt. They get hurt. All bad situations. So just tell them, like, hey, I'm blank streamer. This is my page. I do this. You know, if something happens, if someone calls into something like this, come on, I'm just doing this. It could be something like that. Most police departments are fine. Non-emergency line, walk to your police department and just kind of explain it to them. It's very simple. It it's kind of scary at first. You you do you you'll see one per- when you when you bring it up, you'll get that one person like I don't know why you're here. This sounds goofy, and then someone eventually will pick their head up and go, I know who I know what you're talking about. Let me get your information. You know, it's it is scary at first, but it, there will be someone, especially like um, I think I, I did it for the um, the police department. Of, of, I did it for Lawrence Police Department. They knew exactly like okay. It took, like I said, like when I walked in there, one person looked at me like I was a goofy person, and then someone was like, "No, no, 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 no." Here, let's talk. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, yeah. yeah. If you want to prank a streamer like that, send them a pineapple pizza or something. No, right. no, don't send anything to other people's houses. Don't do that. No, it's yeah. bad. 
Yeah, there's no. I mean, re- there, like, there are, there are streamers who have actually set up where you can tip people by sending them sending food to you. Correct. Yeah, it's yeah, set yeah. up so that they don't know where you live. It's, it's yeah, done right. through yeah. the system. That so stuff is fine. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's silly. Yeah. That's but fun. if you found out someone's address online by doing other methods, right? Don't send things to people's houses <laughs> like that. Okay, don't right. do that. That bad. Not gonna think it's cute. Now, if they have a P.O. box, that's public, and go ahead and send mm-hmm. things like that, you know. You know, I always thought about getting a P.O. box where people could send things to and me. That, but, and that's why most know. streamers do a P.O. box instead of a, yeah. you know, here's my address, send stuff to me. Also, if you're setting up a P.O. box, personal preference, if you ever want to stream or set up a P.O. box like this, don't do it in your town. If you got a small, especially if you have a small town, don't do it in your small town. Don't do it in your city. Do it somewhere that you're acceptable to where you can drive through that's away from you, okay? Because... You're putting this address of where you have to go to go pick this thing up. People will follow you. People will watch this thing. People are... If we've done nothing for the last hour, I'll just tell you that there are people out there. That <laughs> right. Or, or, you know, are a little silly. Okay? People get silly and squirrely. Okay? All right? We're not talking about fun squirrely. Squirrely Dan. Differently squirrely. Sasang fans. Yeah, Sasang fans. When you set that PO box, make sure it's put it in a secure area. Somewhere that's away from you, you know. Don't poop where you live, okay? This type of thing, you know. You know just because, like, oh, this PO box is right here. It's really easy to get to. Heck no, I'm going to go to the PO box that's over here in this major city. Heck, yeah, that's far away from me. Good luck, you know? you know. You know what they need to do? And this is something I'm just thinking, I just thought of. Somebody needs to set up a service like a UPS or something like that where they can set up a PO box. Mm-hmm. And people deliver to that PO box, and then that P that they take that and then mail it to your address or something. Mm-hmm. I was literally thinking these like a reverse that. proxy really PO cool box, kind of like a service. like a cloud flare of a PO boxes. Yeah, yeah, basically, so it bounces around before it gets to you. <laughs> All right, well, be fair. Bi- business idea out there for the reverse pro- router of. The <laughs> angular router. No one knows. No one knows. <laughs> Okay, sorry. The the other big thing that needs to really be touched on is the combination of the fact that these people are normal people and or everyday people, not normal people, and that we don't really know who they are behind. Them. So there was a big issue that happened in the fighting game community um, because of people showing up to events young women showing mm-hmm. up to events thinking that they know who the streamer is and um terrible things happen involving the p word oh, no. Oof. and the r word Oof. 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 because there's no way of knowing exactly who that who these people really are mm-hmm. and a lot a lot of these people some of these people especially like professional gamers and stuff like that are not very old. Their their whole life has been playing video games, so they don't they're don't really have a lot of social experience. Right. I can give a great I can give an, an actual example of that where I will okay with naming names. Okay. Um there is a group of people who make um online content and have for a long time called Rooster Teeth. And if you've heard of uh, Red versus Blue, mm-hmm. you know, which is one of the first um, internet shows and things like that, it was done with Mishima. Uh, they got real popular. So they, they do a lot of other things now. They do uh, Ruby and things mm-hmm. like that. So um, they have a, a thing where they play uh, live video games. Uh, Achievement Hunter is the name of the group. Yeah. And one of the people in Achievement Hunter, um, he was married had three kids i think mm-hmm. he was mm-hmm. three two or three and um his name was ryan and uh a lot of people liked him i mean i liked watching his content he was very funny and he kind of had a persona of being the crazy guy the guy who was would you know kill you without thinking about thinking about it but it was always like a persona type thing mm-hmm. um but it came to light that he was actually going to convent these conventions um, that they were doing and grooming fans, young female fans who were underage um, to go back to his his hotel room and he would have sex with them. Right? And then 
So this came out, and the initial person who talked about it, everybody started saying, no, you're lying, this is, can't be true, blah, blah, blah. And then more and more people came out, and it became very obvious that this was happening. So he was immediately fired. Uh, everybody that he was working with, all the group, because they mm-hmm. were real close. They used to sit next to each other every day. They they knew each other. They went to each other's house. They were, they'd become friends. Right. They were completely shocked and just devastated by it, right? And it just destroyed that whole community for the most part. And they're rebuilding and they're doing a good, you know, doing good work. And they've tried to eliminate all the videos that he was in from their mm-hmm. catalog, yeah. which hurts because he was in a lot of stuff. Um, but they're trying to move on from it. But it's like how that one cancerous person, you know, hurting these other people, hurting his own family, um, can can really infect the communities like that. Um, because as you were talking about, I gave me enough time to, to fully look up some of this stuff. So in the fighting game community, there's a big tournament called Evo Evolution, okay. which is which is basically like the equivalent of the fighting game Super Bowl, mm-hmm. right? That's where I call, they have the, all the big tournaments. They announce these big games. They have massive stages, and that's where they all they all play. So, the one of the co-founders, um, Evo was canceled last year because one of the co-founders was was it came out with a lot of uh, sexual misconduct and abuse issues with people that showed up to the evil events. Mm-hmm. And now so they it canceled an entire fighting game tournament that was that it wasn't just one game, it was literally people's livelihood that they've been working all year for across like fifteen different games mm-hmm. like that because somebody decided that I'm going to be an awful human being. And, and it's... wait a minute, like so, Evo. This is the one where, like, a lot of the like, like if you see like fighting game, like good clips and that crowds there. This is majority of them where yes. they come from. Yeah. Yes, that like, like that best... is where that's the biggest stage of yeah. if you're looking at fighting game tournaments. Evo is where where it all goes down. That's where like the world champion of the game is. Yeah. T- is crowned. Yeah, yeah, w- yeah. When you want to know how trash you really are, uh... <laughs> right? You can go watch that. Go watch this. Yeah. Yeah, which, uh... but it's it's scary when you like you have to real the the issue is not knowing who's actually behind that personality mm-hmm. and some people who are willing to put all this time and effort into these parasocial relationships mm-hmm. they get taken advantage of because of what happened um mm-hmm. What was his name? So like like like, a, the, like even like parents could, could probably get like just trapped like oh yeah this person seems so sweet and nice yeah I'll drop you know I'll drop my kids off at the convention and I'll come back you know yes exactly um, there it is there was a a YouTuber who was arrested for because he used his his status to get um, young underage girls to send him. Um, pictures of themselves oof oof yeah in um in not safe for work such situations oof oof so it's one of those things of the person behind it is who you're putting your time and investment into mm-hmm. might not be fucking worth it right <laughs> because they could end up being you end up giving power to somebody who is manipulative and destructive and awful. Mm. 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 And that's not even getting into the fan hate over random stuff. Like there was, there was a wrestler who ended up who had, who was on this uh, reality show that's on Netflix called Terrence house. And during one of the, one of the things that happened, she had an interaction on the show Mm-hmm. That the fans didn't like, mm-hmm. so they cyber bullied her to the point where she killed herself because they because this person ruined something that was so precious to her in the mm-hmm. show, mm-hmm. and because she had a negative interaction with that person, even though it was something that was her prized possession that that person destroyed, mm-hmm. the fans tore her down to the point where she couldn't she wasn't willing to be. Here. 
and it's that that blind mob mentality. A lot of things that happen. And there, and there's even events that happen that aren't even necessarily related to the fans pushing. Some of these people who get into like influencing have mental issues that they're avoiding, mm-hmm. and some of those will flare up and become visible very very ugly. Like there's a um, you know, I watch I watch people do reactions. Like I said before, there was a reactor um, who suddenly just stopped posting, and when people were like, "What happened?" and they went and found out he had gone into the woods and killed himself. Uh, another two reactors that I know both stopped doing any reactions and then pub- posted publicly that they were going through a program because they were you know suicidal and they were trying to get help, and you know. So they would say, we're not posting anymore. We're not doing any more reactions. We're just going to do, you know, this is just too important for me, for my mental health. And, you know, they occasionally would post like, you know, here's my new support dog, you know, because they would get an emotional support dog. And it was kind of the yeah. cliche, but they were doing that. It was helping them. Mm-hmm. But the, there's, you have to be careful when you're following an influencer or following a, a YouTuber or whatever that, they're just people they're going through shit too just like you are and you, i always try not to make sure to make sure i'm not putting any uh inf, any undue pressure on them for any reason because that's you don't know what you're messing with Correct. sometimes yeah. with that right and they, Another... don't, and they don't know with their fans what they might be messing with either because you don't know if somebody's just trying to be nice to you or if they're going down a path that you want to avoid right so you have to play that line yeah, very careful. Both yeah. sides of the, both sides of that screen. Another great example is um, recently, mm-hmm. uh, PewDiePie d- talked about a video where he was in a very bad depressive state where he be- he ended up having, he was abusing alcohol, hmm. and it, he was either drinking or making YouTube videos because those are his only two escapes that he had. And when he stopped drinking, he felt like it was it was like missing a friend. Because of how 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 Jeez. addicted he was to it. Is this like like does this happen like because of the lockdowns or like just happened like? No, he, just, it, he it was, was he was talking about on. it. He, he did it like I think it was like 2019 or something. Okay, okay, All right. Oof. But he he was he was and he was going through it. He, he recently came out about it, hmm. and like there was a point where he stopped. He took a break from YouTube because YouTube is a job. Yeah. And people don't realize that that it is a job for a lot of yeah. people. And it's very stressful, and there's a lot of pressure on them, especially if you're doing like content every day. Right, and it is like yeah. doing like this this content creation job. It it, it is very incredibly stressful. Uh, this is why, like, I applaud when like the solo creators take some time off. Like uh, Crowder, he takes July off. Uh, is it July off that he takes off every every year? Um, here, our network, we're gonna take we take off in January. You know, at the end of December, January. Like, so like if you guys don't see us for like that long, or it's just me gaming content, it's like. We do this break every year, all the time, because we all need to step away and take a break. You know, you know, I really didn't understand it at first as a listener, but when I got onto the show and started doing, it, like, oh god, I needed needed the break, needed the break. I was like, I need to do something else, <laughs> real quick, and because the treadmill of YouTube or comment on Twitch, it, it is an incredibly like, it, like, all right, so like, like this this, this Twitch page, right? Like that we're streaming on right now. An amazing growth in this first year, right? Because I was streaming all the time. But the moment I stopped because I started working full time, it, it, it just plateaued, right? And it's really hard to get up there because I'm not streaming the same content all the time. I'm not on there all the time. I'm not cultivating the the thing to get there. And it gets in your head like, will it ever do that? But you have to... It was more of a... I realized this thing like it made me want something out of the Twitch page more than I wanted. Like I'm not trying to grow... I want to grow it just to get my word out there. But the main reason I stream games was because I want to show people the game. And I need the audience's help. I need your help to help me finish one player games also you know there's no way in heck i can do a one player game by myself you know I, i've seen me not do it i've got a backlog of one player game that i will not finish and it's not for you know it wasn't for twitch you know there's some two multiplayer games that you know wasn't some people in this room i wouldn't even finish right so, so. resident I, evil 6 i i haven't played paladins and since the, since the last time we played together i think well when well, I, had same. My, well yeah. I had my famous blow up yeah well, 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 we have not played in a long time either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Yagaras sucks. Okay, Yagaras sucks. <laughs> yeah, right? I killed it. 
Um, um, I, you know, I just finished uh, Bard's Tale 4. I mean, I got that years ago, and I finally finished it recently. So. Nice. And, and I could be streaming that stuff. It's just that when I decide to play, it's just random. Mm. And it's just like, if you don't have a schedule on YouTube, it's really just you are just end up talking to nobody because nobody knows you're there. And it's, <laughs> YouTube the does. YouTube a... does. And I wanna, since we're on YouTube, I want to rag on a little bit. Uh, discoverability on YouTube is, is horrid dog crap right it's it's so bad i mean everybody else does it better than twitch and it's just so frustrating because if i go to youtube i can go to the main youtube page and they'll try to tune what i watch to you know say hey you might like this because you watch this other stuff mm -hmm. you try that on twitch <laughs> you're not gonna get that <laughs> you're not gonna get uh people like what you normally watch mm -hmm. presented to you you have to go yeah. searching for it and Correct. then that becomes horrible yeah. So getting started nowadays is just, it's just terrible. Yeah. Like, uh, for some... I'd, always, I'd recommend doing YouTube and then switching, you know, and doing a Twitch app on top of it. But yeah, Twitch likes to promote the top streamers all the time, and it's just like, yeah, but they're the ones they've invested money in. Right. They want to get the return. Right. That's it. Yeah. It's it's just like with but... YouTube, they don't care because they're not investing in a lot of people. Right. They're just trying to sell ads, so they want to get people in front of content they like in order to make that ad money <laughs> whereas twitch is much more about you know we need to we need to promote these big guys that we've given all this money to yeah yeah so all right so i want to go talk about um so we, we we spent the last hour and a half talking about um these parasocial relationships i want to now like talk like you know right, are the uh warning signs that like we can see when someone's are having these um possible solutions and then we'll and then we'll wrap up Okay, so okay. so like, what are the like some of the warning signs? Oh, like, wait, wait, wait. what? No, we're not going for four or five hours. Today. No, no. I thought we were going to do a no massive old time streaming. No, no. <laughs> My car needs to be. I I have a broken car. Okay, all right, all right. I I have similar issues. I know. Just, uh, <laughs> maybe when the. You know what? Like, I really do feel like doing like some old fashioned like like really long stream. I think I might because um. I really don't. Uh, I'm hoping like the uh, uh, food shortage hits turkey because like I have not bought my turkey yet for uh, Thanksgiving, and I'm kind of hoping they all sell out. So I'm, I'm not forced to cook one because I really don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm hoping I get to do like a, uh, honestly, I want to do a pork shoulder. I want to do a 16 hour pork shoulder again. And if I do that, I'd probably just stream the entire time, put the camera <laughs> on the temp, and then just take breaks of like oh oh it dropped five degrees. Gotta be right back, guys. Pause. Go up there, put some wood on it, come back turn it up you know because it's not like i can look at it i can't the only thing i'm doing is watching the temperature i'm manning the fire <laughs> you know and it's like oh drop five five degrees add a coal add wood add coal add wood just keep adding <laughs> you know and subtract dash you know all right uh, i distracted us i'm sorry yes you that did was. yes you did so all right let's start with you vincent let's go with warning signs and possible solutions so the biggest issue with parasocial relationships is that in like a lot of things in moderation, they're okay. Mm -hmm. Because yes, there are there. It's okay to be a fan of somebody. It's okay to be invested in what they're doing. But if you decide that you're, you, if you realize that in your off time, all you're thinking about is what this streamer was doing and then mm -hmm. at this time, and that's all you care about, it might be an issue when you, if you're not actually, friends with the person who's streaming or has or have a direct communication with them or are have a small enough community where you guys where you guys are a close knit group mm -hmm. it is much more likely that that person doesn't really know you well. mm -hmm. and that person is going to just keep doing their content so having this a small amount of of parasocial relationships of being invested in that you want somebody to do good. You want them to be, you want them to, to get better. Yeah. You'll donate every once in a while because you have the money too. or, Hey, they have a Patreon and I love their content. So I subscribe to their Patreon to make sure they get more content. Those are all fine. Mm -hmm. But when you start demanding, they do stuff for you. When you start, when you start getting upset when they don't release something, when they're supposed to release it because, Oh man, something in their life happened. And, now that thing that you wanted has been on pause for a while. Like, 
so people get sick, people get hurt, things happen, but demanding that they put out this content right now or being upset because somebody said something that you don't, that isn't 100% your stance on something. Hmm. If somebody goes, well, I'm not a fan of anime because I don't, I don't really get it, then you you dogpiling on them and attacking them for not liking anime is stupid. And you, and because you because you perceive them to be your friend, mm-hmm. you end up you end up harassing them instead of just supporting them like everybody else. So it's really important to just to to start realizing when you're getting too invested. And also know the fact that the the people on the other side of the screen don't want to date you. They they don't know who you are. You can you can donate millions of dollars. They don't know who you are and they don't want to be with you. And realizing that they're preying on your emotions to to inter- have you interact more is another thing you have to be cautious of because not everybody does that. Mm-hmm. Some people do, but it's it's one of those things of yes, they're attractive or yes, they they're everything you look for in a in a partner, but they have 200,000 followers. Uh what what do you think that your hundred dollar donation every stream is going to get you? Right. Nowhere. Right. Yeah. So the biggest thing is that the only real solution is realizing what's happening and understanding that this is what's happening. But it's emotional manipulation, and it's hard for a lot of people to see through emotional manipulation, especially with like the celebrity stuff and the idol stuff and the Mm K-pop stuff. And that's how things are marketed to affect your brain in that manner. I I have a, an example, but I don't know if I want to get into it on this. Oh my God. Um, (laughs) I (laughs) want, there are, there are people who will go to strip clubs. Oh Mm, yeah. That, uh, they give money to, to the stripper. The stripper is going to fall in love with them and they can, you know, leave and save them and it's a whole mentality right but the girls know what they're doing to try to apply as much money out of you without letting it get to a point where they have to be scared about walking out of the place at night so exactly. it's a there's a line they have to try to go go across but their their whole thing is trying to build on that misconception that the person has mm-hmm. and there are some streamers who do that too where they would build on that as much as they can, but then they try to make sure that it doesn't cross a line because it's very it's a very sensitive area to do. But for the person who's just watching and into that situation, you have to be aware of that. You can't let your this idea that you know she's not going to go home with you. Right? Just, they're performers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're performers. They're, they're perform- working. They're, yeah, they're actors. They're mm-hmm. even though they're normal everyday people, the the person they show you on stream. Isn't exactly who they are because right. they ca- it and, can't be right, and it's not just about relationships too. I mean, there there are people right. who just go crazy on the on the um, the relationships, the paranormal, the para social, uh, yeah, parasocial. I was yeah. Just thinking so, paranormal for some reason. Yeah, paranormal uh, relationship. That's a different show. Relationship. A different we'll do that show. episode in December. <laughs> the Art Bell. We're gonna do that at midnight. So the. Um, it's not always like a sexual or, or anything like that type of connection. It's mm-hmm. just, you're my friend, mm-hmm. you know, you, you give me something that I want or need in my life that I'm not getting somewhere else. And then you're, you're starting to funnel all of that into that relationship. That mm-hmm. is one way. Yeah. And you have to be careful about that. Cause that's not how it works. Right. That's not healthy. It's uh, more we, isolated. Yeah. I, well, I think that everybody, and I'll just say this right now. I think everybody should be going to a therapist sometime. Like, even if it's once every six months to just get a check-in and and talk about some stuff. Just so that you're getting somebody that you're talking to that's able to give you a clear, unbiased view of what your relationships are, what you're doing, how you're living, etc. Make sure your mental health is okay. Uh, if you feel like you need it more than that, definitely go more than that but um that's a great way to check in 
with with yourself so you don't go down a rabbit hole like that because if you are going down that rabbit hole and you talk to somebody every six months or whatever it's going to come out in that conversation because if you're going down that rabbit hole it's all you're thinking about and it'll mm-hmm. come out in your conversation and they'll catch it That's good. Yeah. right it, it, if you decide to pull your whole life savings to support your bias then you know yeah, they'll but- come out yeah, that that's that's a good that's a great solution there, right? Uh, and uh, but uh, just 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 checking in. So my therapist, you mean Joe Rogan, right? That counts, right? Well, you know, you, since you have such a close relationship with Joe Rogan, mm-hmm. you should be good for that, right? That's your oh, good. Be good, for oh, good, good, yeah. good. Uh, another big thing is because it's so isolating. Because a lot of people put this time and effort into it. Um, make sure you have time to check up on your IRL friend. You so you people. Human beings need skinship, period. Mm-hmm. Meat space. Even if it's, even if you, even if you're a guy, and your only friend groups are men, ask him for a hug. Even if you don't feel comfortable with it, you need skinship. You need human interaction, human contact. Everybody okay. needs a hoodie. Exactly. Yeah, hugs are great. Hugs are awesome. Human touch, human interaction. Like I always like. A lot of people time when someone goes like, "Man, I just you know like I just, just I just feel so isolated." I I always is just like, "Why don't you take a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu class? You're gonna get lots of touch. You're gonna get some exercising. You want to feel like a." And that's a lot of people when they do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Like, I feel amazing. Touch. You just even though you're like wrestling, you're touching and working out. The the endorphins in your brain is just like it, it's firing off. It, it is an amazing time. So I recommend Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. You don't have to do BJJ, but I recommend it. I have a different. I'm a, I'm a kind of an isolated person. I prefer not seeing anybody or talking to anybody um, physically. <laughs> mm-hmm. Stay in my little room, my little house, <laughs> my little world, and choose when I want to talk to people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but you also have somebody that's also there that you can still gain kinship, skinship from. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, if they have a pulse and it's in the same vicinity as you and they have skin on them then you can at least touch them high five whatever it's, uh, that's just the lady that lives in my house <laughs> is that my roommate I don't have that anymore thank you <laughs> alright alright so we got some great solutions we got some warning signs we got some good checkups so like it's like so if you made it this part of the episode you're like you're really like the the best types of fans you're awesome you guys rock you know you can listen to anything in the world but you decided to listen to us so we're gonna go ahead and do share, hmm? share like and subscribe uh, subscribe <laughs> you're gonna say share like and subscribe That's That's, what no no click that no. notification bell down there right <laughs> <there. laughs> Oh my god! Not a YouTuber. Not a YouTuber. To, I try to get used to that. Smash that button. Hit it in the doobly doo. Hit it in the doobly doo. Hit it in the doobly doo. Or what's what's it on Rumble? What, do like, the we, thing. Yeah, do the thing. Do we have a Rumble page yet? Do we want one? <laughs> <laughs> I check it out because, like, I like I said, like, I, I miss. Anyways, no, no, I'm recording. No, no, stop it, right? Hold, stop it, stop it. I know, I know what you're trying to do. All right, let's go ahead, wrap up. Final words. We'll let uh, Vincent go first, and then then Ryan home, then I'll you know, and, and end this like this three ring circus. All right, final thoughts. The reason I wanted to talk about this is because this has been a kind of a concept that's been sitting in my mind, especially during all this lockdown. There's a, especially during the lockdown, a lot of other people um, surviving the lockdown, not having a community of people to hang out with, not, not having a pod of people that you can go see every day, every, at least once a week. It's, it's scary, and, it's, and it turns you more towards the digital. Mm-hmm. And with mm-hmm. how much social media, no matter how much we hate it, is advancing, especially with stuff like Metaverse, don't even get me started on that. Uh, human touch is going to... Like, human interactions are... In person, are starting to seem less and less often. Mm-hmm. Especially with people working from home. Especially from people that don't have to leave their house to do a lot of things now. So, it's important to realize that the person on the other side of the screen you're watching might not be the person you know you think they are. They might not even know who you are, and no matter how much time and effort you put into it, there's a high likelihood you're not going to get anything back from it. 
and understanding that that's the scenario and that that is something that has happened in life for a long time. Mm-hmm. And there are billion dollar co- industries based around that concept of you give us money, you get you get to shake hands with pretty girl. So it's one of those things of it's it's really important to keep an eye on your mental and also realize that at the end of the day, the people on your screen aren't the same as the people you have in meet space. You can have online friends. You can have people you play with. They have interactions with all the time. Mm-hmm. That's different than an influencer or a streamer or a or a YouTuber that you that you watch religiously and they have no idea who you are. So make real friends. That Twitch streamer in the hot tub isn't your real friend. <laughs> All right, that's that's good. Good, Reinhold. Uh, just uh, like to say that everybody should just, and I said this in the last episode, and it kind of applies here again too. Just know yourself. Get to know who you are and what you drives you and what you're doing because if you start to deviate from the normal and you start seeing yourself going down a path as long as you're taking the time to reanalyze yourself and know what you're doing and know what you're thinking uh, and be honest with yourself you should be able to avoid that Um, if you can't get help don't there's nothing uh, negative about going and talking to somebody once and it's so much easier to do these days now that we've got this online counseling stuff going on where you can call better help or one of these modern health places you know that there's a lot of different places you can go and just have a conversation with someone mm-hmm. that is trained to spot problems that you might be involved in or, or issues mm-hmm. that you might be having that you may not even see right right yep there's a value to that and I think everybody should should at least, even if it's just an online once every couple months or whatever, just talk to somebody <laughs> about that stuff so that you can keep your mental health clean and you're not falling into any of these traps. Yeah. And and that I, I think I was talking about it last week uh, about politics because a lot of times we get into politics mm-hmm. and uh, we start going down a path and then y- you you know it's not healthy the way we're doing this the, these days. So always try to be concerned about your mental health first before anything else. Yep. 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 There's some weird, there's some weird stands for certain caucuses too. Um but yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's weird man. stands for everything. <laughs> Not, uh, no names. Anyways, uh yes. Uh well. Yeah. If you yeah. The online things is not as uh, the online uh, counseling is not as good as the for face to face, but for a good check in or just the first step because some people are like, well, what do I talk about? Trust me, it just it's do your own research on it. it. It's an amazing time to go like just to have someone talk with that that is trained to be able to get the get the words out of you so you can talk. Just like you run a vulnerability scanner on your application or you just run antivirus on your computer once in a while, the thing does it to your mental self, okay? That, oh, this is I, a- I do. Hmm? And as long as we're talking about this, I do have one thing I want to bring into. If you are talking to somebody like a therapist and you find that they're not good, mm-hmm. immediately jump to someone else. So yes. I know somebody who went to a therapist and they got in to talk to the therapist and the therapist spent half the time talking about themselves to the patient. Bad. No, that's not what they do. They're not trained. They're trained not to do that. There, you should not know anything about your therapist's personal life because you should be talking about you and you alone, and that's what the focus should be. And not every therapist is good, and not every therapist is good for you. So, if you find that it's not working, or you're not getting what you think you need, or you're finding that the person is talking about themselves too much. Mm-hmm. Go with someone else. Right. Get a different person. Try try it because you don't want the you don't want the impact or the thought thinking that uh, therapy just doesn't work because you're talking to a bad therapist. Yep. Right. You need to find you, the match that matches. Correct. Yeah, you you don't want you don't want to take yourself out of that. Like you know, just yeah. You don't want that to be the negative impact to prevent you from getting the help that you need. Yeah. 
it's like get, going out and getting a um like a tattoo a tat a tat most these people who do tattoo are tattoo artists they do tattoos you know like they're artists if you want a certain tattoo right you want this right if you go to someone who doesn't do that style you're gonna get it you know oh those tattoos are junk blah, blah, blah. yeah but you wanted this spooky style you want someone who does disney stuff what the heck is wrong with you <laughs> you know that's that's on you that's more you than anything okay so yeah yeah go out go and it's also okay to like you know to tell them like hey i want to try a different therapist so even try it's okay to try them out it's okay it's it's fine you know it's it, it is your life you live it how you want you control you control everything going on to it so like i said We've been doing this for close to two hours now, so we're going to end the stream here. Thank you for everyone who's listened this long in the show, because this is getting not that long in the tooth, but it get, can get even longer, because we have a lot more stuff to talk about, and I can feel... Hey, hmm? One more thing I want to say. And, and Ryan Hall's trying to get this to go like four <laughs> hours here. You see him? I'm going to it's, cut it's, him. It's okay. It's okay. Cut I him off like here. I treat dating. I, I cry in the corner and don't interact. All right. Like I said, like I cut them all off. Cut them off. Cut them out. Anyway, so... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening <laughs> to the Chris Spangle Show. Uh, well, I hope we'll be back next week for like your regular schedule programming, but uh, this is what you get today. So, thank you, everyone. Have a good night. And adios. I enjoy. Like I said, it's you know, you know, you guys can listen to anything else, but decide to listen to this. So, thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye.